Welcome everybody. My name is Michael Rosenzweig. I am one of the two managing directors at Turo College Berlin and I have the pleasure today to be your host at this open house for undergrads. So let me first give you the structure of our open house and uh, then we will rush through a quick presentation. So uh, first of all, I'll rush you through a quick presentation as said, and then it is time for our two alumni to tell about their experience at Turo College Berlin and what they did afterwards, what they achieved, how their life evolved and how did Turo fit into this and how obviously their experience at Turo Berlin was. So it was gonna be Raziel and Taylor. After that, we'll meet with our professors of several departments. So first we'll have Professor Moskowitz, who is a professor of psychology and former dean for undergrads, and he is a trauma specialist. Then we'll have one of our beloved teacher by all of our students, Marius Farner, at, who is a teacher at the business department. And last but not least, from professor's side, is going to be Professor Brian Crawford, who is a professor of English, and he will tell us about our liberal arts approach. Then it's the time for the most important person within this open house, our admissions officer. Our admissions officer, Scott Meyer, will tell you all the bits and pieces, tricks, and all that you need to know in order to start at Turo College Berlin. And then we'll have Tal Gibich. Ms. Gibich is our recruitment officer, and she will tell you a lot about housing, visa, scholarships, you name it. So a lot of things that from our experience, people want to know while joining our university. And last but not least, we'll have a Q&A section where you can ask your questions and they will be answered. Actually, if you have any questions, just drop them through the Q&A uh, function. We'll gather them and at the end, we'll do our best to answer those. So let's uh, dig our toe into our first presentation. So Turo College Berlin is an American university in Berlin. It was founded in 2003 and is part of a huge uh, international university system, which is based in New York. Our goal is to continue creating a multicultural international environment that is conducive to learning. Turo is a university where you are prepared for the professional world and given the courage and tools needed to embark in a successful career. We strive to provide you with a unique international education entirely in English in Berlin. And a unique thing about us is that uh, we are the only university that offers in Germany a dual degree option, a German degree and an American degree, if you want both, if you want just the German or the American. So as had before, in terms of degrees, our undergraduate programs, we are accredited by the German Wissenschaftsrat and Aquis, a German accrediting agency, but also by the Middle States and the New York State Department of Education. We offer small class sizes, so your voice will be heard and you are not just a number at Turo College Berlin. And you have the option for unique internships and after graduating, excellent job opportunities. I hope our two alumni will tell you more about that. So being part of the Turo University Network, obviously not in time of Corona, but next year you will have the option to go abroad, spend a semester in LA, in Jerusalem, in New York, in Moscow, in Nevada be part of the tour system, go abroad, have a unique experience on that as well. Our student body is very diverse, based in Germany, obviously, the biggest chunk is coming from Germany. 
but that doesn't mean that these people are German German. We have a lot of expats joining our university. And besides that, obviously, the US, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, Russia, Asia, Israel, Africa, the Middle East, you name it, at our campus, at present, we have around 70 nationalities present. So the most important questions for students is obviously, what will you do with your degree afterwards? So to tell you some stories, people who did business with us, they went into banking, they went with Gazprom, they went with big corporations as Coca-Cola, they went into pharmaceuticals or into the property business with JLL. And with a degree in psychology, you can go with a big corporation and do HR. You can pursue your studies and do a master. You can get into research. You can become a counselor. So a lot of options on that on the table. And we also have a very vibrant campus life. We have a student government, which is organizing activities. We have student clubs, events, holiday celebration, group sessions, and many, many more. So please, if you have any questions, reach out. We are here for you. You can drop us a mail. You can reach out by phone, follow us on social media, and we will happily answer all your questions. Thank you very much for your attention. And now I would pass on the word to our first alumni. Raziel, the stage is yours. Thank you very much, Michael. First of all, hello, everybody. My name is Raziel. I'm 31 years old. Graduated from Truro College in 2016. I started as a property and asset manager in the real estate department in Berlin um, at a company. Worked there for, for oh yeah, three years, three and a half years. Um, and luckily, um, yeah, well, I was lucky enough that some of, of the clients there felt confident about, about me and uh, went with me um, to um, just support and consult them. So I um, founded my own business a year ago and luckily everything's pretty well. So um, I'm thankful for that. Regarding the Turo College, which obviously um, was, was a main part, um, was a main reason for my success. success. Um, I, I, I wanna say and point out a few things. So first of all, what, 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 what I loved about this university is the, the diversity and the just closeness in terms of how many students there are on the campus. You sit in class with about maybe 20 people. So there, I mean, I remember Indian, Pakistani, Israeli, Arabs. Uh, there were, we, we had students from Africa. It's just amazing how, how, how many different cultures you really get to to learn a little better, um, which was very important to me personally because I'm interested in that. And I believe that in terms of social intelligence, which is very important in, in, in this day and age, um, I believe tour brings, brings a lot. So this was very important for me. The second thing for me personally was, um, since I was raised in Germany, like in Berlin and um, underwent the German school system and everything, Obviously, I was not able to speak, speak, write English, think English um, on the level I am now. Back in the day, which at the beginning was <clears throat> tough and difficult to study, uh, but, um, you know, in hindsight, this was, this was the best decision I could make in my life because this it just languages open so many doors. This is unbelievable. I'm very thankful for that. Um, the next thing I wanna I wanna mention is <clears throat> I touched on it before. The community, the camaraderie on the campus, you get basically everywhere. Um, either you have courses with everyone, or you just meet them at parties at the. Um, well, obviously we have Corona now. The, um, just on, on campus, you, you talk to everybody, you know everybody by the first and last name, what they do, what they are about, 
Um, and what I really think I appreciate about, about this one is um, we felt as a community and you felt this, it was just the vibe and the feeling on campus that we also wanted to represent ourselves out of the campus uh, in a proper way. So people don't think that, you know, we a bunch of who knows what. Um, the next thing for me personally, which is uh, very important in, in terms of studying, because I've been to a German university, I know how the German system is, um, just the professors. Uh, first of all, all of them are professionals. All of them have a lot of experience just in, in practicing uh, their jobs uh, and teaching. And the other thing is just the, the, the relationships we have to our professors. I mean, we, we are very close. They know all of our names. We just number. It's, it's, it's how I felt on a German university, just as a number. Um, here you feel more like part of the, of the community. So, and also uh, I wanna mention, uh, we have two professors on the panel that I know pretty well. Professor Fana, who <laughs> you can meet at the party and just, um, um, and who meant to me personally, um, he did a lot, I believe. He, um, and um, I, I believe what, what, what the Turo College also teaches is skills beyond what you need in professional life and skills for your personal life and everything, um, you know, to learn how to message yourself the right way, how to listen to people, how to understand and acknowledge and accept other people's opinions and um, respectfully react to them. Um, so this was the fifth point uh, that, that, that I wanted to make today was about really writing, messaging, understanding. I believe that, uh, I mean, I believe that this system, the Turo College, it really provides us with um, more than what you would learn on the German university in terms of numbers and the theory. Really, we, we, we got to get a lot of skills out of it, which I'm very thankful of again. Um, and I hope I could get you a little insight into our college. Um, and thank you very much for your attention. Michael? Thank you very much, Raziel, for these warm words. It's uh, yeah. uh, a pleasure to, to hear that. So uh, thank I would now pass on to, to Taylor, to our second alumni, to, to, to share with her, with her, uh, her thoughts and, and how she envisioned Turo and what her career is right now. Taylor, the stage is yours. Yes, thank you, Michael, and thank you, uh, Raziel, uh, for that heartfelt um, presentation. I can only second you on all of your points. Um, I graduated a bit earlier than Raziel, uh, about six years ago from Toro, and you can probably hear in my accent, I'm an American uh, who moved to Germany. Um, actually, yesterday was my 13-year anniversary, um, and I was living and working for my dad in uh, the state of Turingen when... Um, I decided uh, after working for him, I wanted to study business. Um, and so I found Toro in Berlin. Berlin seemed like a really exciting international big city. Um, and I can only say it was the, also for me, uh, one of the best decisions I've made in my life. Um, it really created a great foundation for me. Um, I'm also 31 years old and uh, obviously it, it helped my career. Um, I've had roles uh, at Bayer, uh, as an intern, I was at Coca-Cola as a working student. Um, after Coca-Cola, I went to PwC, where I did two full-time internships, uh, and then I was a consultant in auditing. Um, after PwC, I ventured to Audible, where I worked in the accounting uh, department, um, because uh, actually what I studied at Toro was the business program undergrad, uh, and I did a, a, a concentration in finance. Uh, but my real passion was always in accounting. So as you can hear from my roles that I've had, um, that was the, the path I've taken where uh, now in my current role, I'm working for a pretty well-known software company in the branch of group accounting called IDL. And um, so that's a bit about my the, the career that I've um, gained, which I totally place um, because of my time at Toro, I give credit to. Um, but Toro also, like Raziel was saying, offered me much, much more than just my CV and my career. 
Um, first of all, you get accredited double degrees, just as Michael had said. So you have, this is great for an American living in Germany. Um, I love Germany, it's become my home. So uh, I've, I was able to study my master's at a German university uh, based on my German accredited um, uh, diploma, which I've brought to show to you today. This is the, the German one that you would receive. This is mine, a Bachelor of Arts. Um, it's not as pretty as the American one, which I'm going to show you shortly. Um, but also, if I ever want to go home, uh, back to the States, then I also have my American degree, um, which I want to show you at a later point. Um, another thing next to the double degrees is uh, Michael had also mentioned, and later Tal uh, will touch on, are the, the, um, the scholarships. I actually was one of the first uh, people awarded the Deutschland Stipendium at Toro. I, I was just going through my files and I found it. So you can also have a chance with good grades uh, and a bit of extra effort to um, get the Deutschland Stipendium. Um, right, so another point is you get the total American experience. So not only do you get the American graduation, uh, Corona pending, but you also get the uh, American diploma, which I'll show you now, which I really love. <laughs> That's my American diploma. It's a bachelor, um, bachelor of Science in Business Management and Administration in Finance. Um, but as Raziel was saying, you also get this, this community feeling, which uh, Michael also mentioned the student government. I was also president of the student government uh, when I graduated. Um, and um, this, this community feeling with student government, taking care of the students and always taking part in the decisions um, that the school is making. Um, was really something special. And also the campus, which now in Corona, you might not get to spend too much time on the campus, but hopefully soon. Uh, it's really a special little island to itself where you can go and you meet your fellow Toro um, study mates. Uh, and it's really something unique in the city. Um, also something about the American experience that I attribute to my time at Toro was the liberal arts approach to the education. So it's, um, which is, it's been very helpful because we have a lot of technology that's taking over very specialized roles. And I also find the German degrees to be very specialized um, and not so much with critical thinking and this liberal arts approach where you really get a holistic education uh, where you take courses such as, you know, law or philosophy or one of my favorites was the um, history of, of art here in the city. We went on field trips all around the city and learned so much about all the different statues that are outside. We went to different museums. We went to a bunker actually where there's a gallery inside once. Um, this was um, really added, it really enriched my intellectual um, uh, being and life that has echoed also in my career, especially later You'll hear from Professor Crawford. He was a professor that I had um, for, for many writing courses and critical thinking course. Um, and the tools um, that he taught me in my writing, I, they have only showed up so many times actually uh, in when I write emails to my colleagues, when I'm um, pr making a story while presenting a, um, something that I'm presenting at work. Even now, like this presentation I'm giving, there's so much when I was preparing it that I was thinking of uh, one of the another professor who teaches you how to do presentations and also Professor Crawford and arguing your point and um, just really strong writing and critical thinking skills. This was um, really stands out to me and is forever with me. No one can take it away, um, right? And also a last point that I have um, that I can echo Raziel on is the supportive professors. I mean, you really, when you're at Toro, you, you can get out what you put in. It's really up to you. And the professors are there. They're all specialized. They're all like really engaged. Um, so if you want to meet with them after class and get some extra help, they're all willing. Um, I even, yeah, Professor Crawford is one of them who would help me after class. He would, you know, review my my write my papers um, an extra round if I if I asked him to. Um, another professor in the finance program, she even helped me by um, talking to her colleagues at Bayer, which is where I got my first internship in um, strategy and planning. So it was my first semi-finance role. Um, yeah, it's really an all around great experience um, that I'll forever remember. And so I can totally recommend it. So thank you for listening and have a nice day. Thank you so much, Taylor, for, for your insight. And uh, yeah, thank, thanks a lot because 
you are basically our ambassadors, right? We can tell you a lot about our programs and everything, but you are the guys who really experience that and that's, yeah, that's so, so unique. Thanks a lot. So now I would pass on to Professor Moskowicz. Professor Moskowicz is a, a professor in psychology, as I said before, one of our former deans for the undergrads and a specialist in trauma. Andrew, the stage is yours. Thank you, Michael. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Or if you're living in another part of the world, uh, good morning or perhaps good evening, welcome. Um, I am professor of psychology here at Torah College Berlin. I am also American. I grew up and got my uh, psychology degree in America, Boston University actually, um, and worked for a number of years as a clinical psychologist and as also a forensic psychologist. Um, but since that time, over the past 20 years, I've taught in uh, three universities in three other countries outside of America. And two of those universities have been ranked within the top 100 universities in the world. And I can say without a doubt that in my opinion, the education that you will get at Turo College of Berlin is, is better than the education that I saw being given at these other universities. Now, why would that be? One of the things that professors at Toro bring uh, that you don't always see in other universities is a, a real commitment to teaching. Um, people are absolutely passionate about the subjects that, that they teach, about connecting to the students, about helping students understand difficult matters. We really do take pride in uh, explaining complicated things clearly and simply and Frankly, we get a lot of uh, pleasure out of the progress that our students make. Also keep in mind in other universities, you know, top level universities, many professors frankly are more committed to their academic careers. They're more committed to publishing, uh, to getting ahead, becoming well known. And the teaching is something that they do and that's part of the job, but it's not, it's not their priority. And for us, it certainly is a priority. You heard from some of our uh, great business students. You're not hearing from many psychology students today, but I can promise you that they are equally as um, happy uh, at, at being at Turo and, uh, and at graduating from Turo. The psychology department really is only a, a, a couple of years old. I came in 2016, but we've had some graduates who have done very well uh, studying, getting graduate degrees at very well-respected universities in other countries continuing with their psychology uh, studies here in Germany, becoming psychotherapists and so forth. So what do we, what do we offer here at Toro? Well, first of all, we're, we're one of the few uh, private uh, psychology, uh, private universities in Germany that offer a, a full general psychology program. And what does that mean? That it's a, a, a program that is uh, fulfilling the criteria of uh, undergraduate degrees in America, also follows the recommendation of the German Psychological Society. It's a very broad and well-balanced program, which is not typical for uh, private institutions. They tend to be more narrow and more applied. So you will have courses in research methods, both quantitative and qualitative, the history of psychology, social psychology, biological psychology. Um, and actually we have often some excellent um, adjuncts who come in and teach some of these subjects. The uh, full-time faculty cannot uh, cover all of the topics we teach. Often we draw on um, graduate students who are at the, for example, Humboldt University's School of Mind and Brain, which is really one of the top places in the world to study the connection between the mind and brain from a psychological perspective. There are also courses in personality, counseling and psychotherapy, and statistics, which is really required uh, for um, doing research in psychology. And, and these courses will prepare you for, for a range of options. Some people use an undergraduate psychology degree and go on in other professions and do quite well because of that. Other people become psychotherapists or counselors other people become teachers, academics, or researchers. So really any option is open to you. Um, 
let me add that each of the four permanent psychology faculty here have their own specialties. As Michael mentioned, I'm trained as a trauma psychologist. I'm, I also have expertise in uh, psychosis, psychotic disorders, and forensic psychology. Some of the other professors here are media psychology experts, cross-cultural psychology, cross-cultural counseling is another major uh, emphasis, and also a psychoanalysis uh, is an area of expertise of another professor. It's been said before, but let me repeat it. What you do get at Turo is a lot of individual attention. Um, our classes are small. It's not uncommon to have 15 students in a class, 20. Uh, there's a lot of one-to-one -one contact that occurs. We're, we're always happy to help you along with presentations, with papers, with understanding some of these difficult and complicated issues. Um, my association before coming to Toro was large universities with thousands or tens of thousands of students. In retrospect, I can honestly say I think I might have enjoyed and probably gotten more out of a small college like Toro College Berlin. But that was my story, and I'm here now. If you do choose to come to Toro when you study psychology, I'm sure that I'll meet you, and I look forward to that. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much, Andrew, for this first insight into our psychology program. And now I would pass on to Marius Fana, a teacher at our business department. And with all the polls that we are doing internally, I can say one of the most beloved teachers by all students. Marius, stage is yours. Yeah, thank you very much for handing over the word to me, Michael. Um, I'm very happy to introduce you to the business program um, at Turo College Berlin. So let me start that the uh, business program at Turo College basically consists of two different programs. The first program is a Bachelor of Science, which is an undergraduate program, and that ends with a diploma, a bachelor diploma. And the second one is a Master of Business Administration. And this ends with a master diploma. So what can you do at Turo College? Well, there are several options, basically three. The first one is that you can start your academic journey with a Bachelor of Science in business and then continue with a Master of Business Administration, both at Turo College. And a clear advantage of the Master program is that you can work and study at the same time because all of the courses are offered in the evening. So that would be your first option. The second one is that you start your academic journey with a Bachelor of Science in Psychology, also at Turo College, and then continue with a Master of Business Administration. So both studies at Turo College. And the third option is, of course, that you start your academic journey with a Bachelor of Science in Business and then continue applying and then continue with another uh, a, a master's at another university, can be Humboldt University, Freie Universität, or somewhere else in Germany, but also outside of Germany. But what is so special about studying business at Turo? Besides the fact that was already mentioned that we have very small class sizes and therefore a much better learning atmosphere in comparison to today's mass universities. Well, first of all, we have two different accreditations. We have a German accreditation and we have an American accreditation. So once you're finished with your studies, after your bachelor, you already have two different diplomas, a German and an, and an American, which is absolutely exceptional from my point of view and unique. So for example, if you want to apply for an internship or a new job or something like that, 
you can put on your CV immediately that you have two different diplomas after studying three to four years, which is clearly an advantage. And of course, if you want to apply for a master's, it's also good to have two different diplomas because you can apply easily in Germany, but also outside of Germany, in the US or any English speaking country. But what else is special about studying at Turo Business? Well, a lot of professors are very well connected to the business world in Berlin, in Germany, but also all over the world. That means they are not only experts in their fields, in their academic fields, which they are, of course, anyway, but they can also help you or support you entering into the business world and give you assistance there. And besides the fact that you get a support by entering in the business world, we also want you to be broadly educated. And I think this is one of the really crucial things nowadays, because in the modern global business world, it's not only important to be an expert in your field, which you have to be anyway, of course, but also to be very knowledgeable in many areas. And therefore, following the liberal arts tradition, we offer besides the core business courses, which we offer anyway, of course, we offer courses in literature, in philosophy, in history, in politics, and also some others. And of course, you can always join the business, uh, the, the psychology program and attend some psychology courses. And what is from my point of view, very unique and exceptional at Turo College is that these liberal arts courses, yeah, philosophy, literature, history, and so on and so forth, they are not taught by business professors who are interested in one of these academic fields, but they are actually taught by real experts in these fields. That means if you study business and you have a literature course, for example, you have this liter literature course with a professor of literature. And the same is for history, politics, and so on and so forth. Now at the end, allow me also to say something personal. I personally had a lot of experience with German university system, with the German university system before I entered or before I joined to Rock College. And what has changed for me personally? I think that mainly this atmosphere of interdisciplinarity at Turo College has really helped me to transform my more narrow-minded, I would say, and very subject-centric viewpoint, to transform that into a more connected and interdisciplinary and broader viewpoint. And this is what you really learn at Turo College. And I guess that this is really essential for our contemporary global business world, but also for the world in general. So I would like to thank you for listening to me and I would be very happy to welcome you at Turo College in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marius, for, for your insight on our business program. Thanks a lot. Uh, very interesting, very compelling. So now I would like to pass on to last but not least to our professor of English literature, Brian Crawford. Brian. Michael, thank you very much for that nice introduction. Um, uh, welcome to all of our visitors. I'm, I'm glad to see uh, so many people here and I wanted to also extend a special 
welcome to Taylor Coburn and Razil Agababaev because I was had the great honor and pleasure of teaching them. And now I am really glad to see them again after several years. And, and you're, I would wanna just say that I see that you're both thriving and I had every confidence that this would be your path. So, but I'm really pleased to, to see you. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about the style of the school. It's been mentioned a bit before, but I, I wanna say a bit more about that. And that is that we have a, a, a liberal arts approach to education here at Toro. And what I mean by that is that the liberal arts approach considers that our mission is to educate the whole person. Yeah? It is not simply a job training center, um, but it is actually an educational process that not only prepares people well for the job market, but also prepares people well for life. And I think that all of our professors stand behind this ideal and that that's part of what uh, makes our commitment even stronger to making sure that every student learns all along the way. Um, with a small college like ours, we have the advantage of getting to know each student um, and by their first name. Um, and that we often see our students in uh, a number of classes. So instead of being at a big university where you meet a professor once, uh, sitting in a class of 200 people, here you meet your professors maybe two or three times. Sometimes you have several classes with a professor. And that's a real pleasure for us because we get to see our students grow and learn along the way. Um, but it's also a benefit to the students because they get to know their professors very well and they receive a kind of mentorship, a kind of guidance from these professors. Um, the school, the structure of the, of the classes includes a lot of electives as uh, Professor Farner just said to us. And that means that we expect our students to take advantage of this. They learn philosophy, they get the chance to study sociology. Uh, I teach a class or several classes in academic writing. I also teach American literature, um, students study American history, public speaking. And all of these are meant to give you all kinds of skills. And let me just kind of explain what I mean by that. Um, in my, right now in my American literature class, we just finished reading a novel um, uh, called My Antonia by Willa Cather. I've got it right here. And one of the things uh, that came up in the, in the study of the novel is, of course, people are talking about the characters, they're talking about the political situation of these characters and uh, what their lives are like. But of course, the students are also learning how to manage a very complex object, which is a novel. And to be able to speak intelligently and make arguments about the novel allows them also to make lots of other complex, intelligent arguments in their lives. So it's not simply so that people are well read, but also so that their mind is trained to think well, because this is what happens when somebody studies literature. And this is also what happens when they study philosophy. Um, you know, it's really interesting that a student who studies moral philosophy might end up then uh, in, a, in a business program uh, as, a, as a graduate student or working in business and have to apply those moral uh, philosophical lessons. And so I think that we, we see this, uh, this approach as something that serves the student for the rest of their lives. Um, the community itself is a small campus um, and we see our students in the cafeteria, we see our students at public events and lectures, and this community learning environment gives our students all kinds of opportunities to develop their social skills, to critical thinking, emotional intelligence, problem solving, thoughtful reflection, this kind of thing. And that's what I mean by a commitment to to training our students in thinking and understanding and expressing their, their thoughts in both speech and writing. And uh, if, you, if you decide to come to Turo, I think this is one of the great things that you can expect to get from an education here. It's really nice meeting you all. And I will now turn uh, the, the stage back over to our MC, Michael Rosenzweig. Brian, thank you so much. I personally wish that I had professors like you when I studied at uh, German University. So, kola kabot. Thank you very much. Now it's time for the most important, as I mentioned before, uh, part of this open house. 
It is time for Scott Meyer, our admissions officer. Scott? Um, thank you, Michael. Um, I'll ask the host to let my course. video back on. I, I was a little bit eager um, earlier, and I think I was cut out. All right, thank you for the introduction. Um, most important person, interesting. A um, lot to live up to. So I am Scott Meyer, admissions officer here at Toro College in Berlin. Um, and today I'm gonna give you a brief overview of how we approach and run our admissions. Um, so as an advantage of studying here at Toro College Berlin is our class sizes, uh, particularly small class sizes. Um, so to ensure our students get the most out of motivated, passionate, prepared students, students committed to learning, students who will participate in a class and be a pleasure to teach, um, so to that end, we try to get as full a picture as possible of our applicants beyond merely grades. Um, so this is where we require certain elements in our application. Um, a letter of motivation, why you're applying to Turo, what interests you about psychology and business. Um, a letter of recommendation vouch from someone who can vouch for your commitment and attitude to learning, how you are in the classroom, how you approach new challenges. Um, and importantly, we interview all our applicants. Um, these interviews we like to run more as a, of like a two-way discussion, um, a conversation where the applicants are encouraged to ask us about the program, about Turo, um, just to make sure that you're comfortable with your decision to study here, as well as our decision to accept you. Um, Alf. Um, so this is basically a simple two-step procedure. The first is to submit your application documents, and the second step is the interview that I just mentioned. Um, for the sake of timeliness, I'm not going to rattle off every single document we require. Um, you can find a list of those on our website on the How to Apply page. Um, they're all listed there pretty, pretty clearly. There's not, nothing too surprising there. They're all pretty standard. Um, but what I want to impress upon you the most today um, is that I am here to the entire process. Um, I mean, we know that navigating university admissions is often daunting or can be quite confusing. Um, at Turo, we strive to be different. We're responsive, we're hands-on. Um, our admissions office and really any administrative office on campus um, really pride ourselves on being approachable and flexible. And um, so, for example, if you're having trouble getting official documents or transcripts, uh, maybe due to Corona, um, you can apply with scans um, by the official copies later on once you get them. Um, if you won't get your TOEFL results before um, the application deadline, um, you can simply apply without them and we will and supply them again later on. Um, or perhaps you've been out of school for a number of years and can't get a letter of recommendation from a teacher. Um, we can have an appropriate like from work experience. Maybe you've done an internship or, or um, volunteered at an organization and someone. Um, so if you have anything similar to this, I urge you to um, reach out to me at admissions at turoberlin.de um, and we can we can figure out a solution to, to any almost any problem you might have. Um, so I urge you all to join us. Um, if you apply before the end of November, you um, auction um, early bird discount on your first semester's tuition. Um, and keep in mind also our refer a friend offers. So if you refer a friend at Turo, you will receive a, 5 a further 5% discount, a 5% discount for every student that you refer to us. Um, like I mentioned earlier, this was a brief introduction. Um, I kept it intentionally brief. Um, so don't um, hesitate to ask any questions um, for the Q&A session after this, or you can just reach out to me directly. Um, and I hope to hear from you all very soon. Thank you. Back to Michael. Thank you very much, Scott. So, uh, very good brief introduction into the important part of admission. And yeah, it's, uh, I think, a great offer on the table for our early bird program and uh, bring a friend. Now, let's pass on to Tal Gibbish, our recruitment officer. Tal, Hi. Hey, yours. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, I'll try to keep it brief because I see there are so many questions. Uh, that we have. Basically, I'm going to talk about housing. I'm responsible for the housing uh, part of student life. Basically, we have options uh, to kind of set you up with a room or apartment, maximum 45 minutes 
uh, from campus. Um, fully furnished, reasonable prices, strong Wi-Fi connection, um, all to help you and better opening terms than you can have in Berlin. I don't know how many of you live in Berlin, but this situation here, the housing situation here is not that nice. So we make it easier for you to find one. We talk to the house management and we keep in contact with them. You're eligible to this uh, option as long as you are um, a student in Tour College Berlin. For the ones that need visa, uh, if you're not European uh, Union citizens, so you need a visa to come here, uh, to come to Berlin, come to Germany. Um, if you're from a country that is not preferred by the uh, foreigners office here, so then you have to start your visa process in the German embassy. Right now in Corona times, uh, it is not needed to get on campus approval from the university. You just need acceptance approval. And that is important. It's nothing it's like it used to be before, not before the Corona. So everything is fine with that. For the people who are for preferred states like uh, the US, Israel, Australia. Uh, so then you can come here and fix your visa from here again with um, um, acceptance approval from uh, admissions here. Um, another thing that I want to bring up is the scholarships. Uh, we know that not everybody can pay the full tuition, so we collected a lot of options for scholarships. We have uh, by degree, by religion, by origin country, uh, citizenship, all these kind of things. And you can find it, I already uh, set up the link here in the chat. So you can check it out and see what suits, what suits you. And if you are confused, so just, you know, uh, send us an email and we try to um, help. Also, one uh, last thing is that our students, alumni uh, and alumni, can get discounts in various uh, business here just because their students here or alumni. So there are many benefits uh, to being a student here. Um, and whatever you have uh, questions, so just email uh, Scott and I'll put my, um, my email as well. Uh, so you can ask every question that you have in mind. Um, that's it from my side. Michael, I suggested we start with the questions because we have kind of a lot. Um, can I ask everybody to turn on their videos? Yes, uh, please. Hello. <laughs> um, so, yes, excuse me for taking off my glasses. Um, for the alumni, we got two questions. Um, first of all, um, I think, Haziel, your native language is not English, right? Right, yes. So the question is, how could you cope with the English materials? Was it hard? What was your way? So um, <clears throat> to me, I think I think um, I'm. Well, at the beginning, it was tough. It was it was really tough, especially in the law classes, for example. It was hard. Then um, I may not have had the best attitude at the beginning. I mean, Professor Crawford, for example. He was tough on me, he, 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 and um, as soon as I really got into it and focused, uh, it came pretty easy, especially because all the students on the campus are speaking English, so you need to socialize anyway, and this helps very much. Uh, it's, it was maybe altogether, it took one, one semester for me, or okay. maybe two semesters for me to be completely in. Okay, and tell her how you as an American, how did you view your friends? Um, did you, did people can, uh, come to you for help, for example? Um, yeah, actually, uh, did they come to me for help for English? Um, a bit at times, but actually I have two friends in mind while we're talking about it. One, I remember he was even at the orientation, so from day one, his name was Felix. Um, and similar to you, Raziel, he, he, the first semester I think was quite tough for him, 
but at the end of the day, I've, I've seen him recently as well. He's like, it, it, it made his English much more, uh, it made it stronger and he, he feels much more confident using English nowadays. And I also saw a couple of my other friends, they really grew as well in their English um, and are, have gone on to have jobs solely in English. So, yeah. Okay. Um, a question for the professors. Uh, that you um, mentioned what courses uh, you have in psychology and business, um, but if you can specify, someone asked, about the specific fields like uh, clinical psychology, if you have, or financing, what, are, what do you concentrate on? Um, maybe, Professor Moskowitz, we'll start with you. Sure. Um, I mean, at this point, we don't have any, and this is typical for psychology degrees, the United States, we don't really have specializations per se, because you're getting a very broad degree that includes some liberal, liberal arts courses. And the feeling is that you're exposed to the wide range of psychological uh, courses uh, that will help you decide in which direction you want to go. Uh, we have a number of courses in the clinical area, abnormal psychology, cl uh, clinical psychology, counseling and psychotherapy and so forth a number of them that are more biological, more research oriented, uh, social psychology, industrial psychology, which is actually a really neat combination of business and psychology because it's about uh, working, understanding how organizations work, potentially kind of working within organizations to introduce more psychological perspectives. So yeah, so there's a broad range of possibilities you can an American degree, you can get an honors, which also involves a, a little bit extra work and doing a bachelor's thesis. A bachelor's thesis is a small, typically research project that you do over the course of your last year under the supervision of one of the psychology faculty. Thank you. Um, for business? Yeah, I mean, I would like to keep it a little bit shorter because uh, Professor Moskowitz has already mentioned that we have a, a variety of courses in psychology as well as in uh, business. I would say we typically have three specializations. Uh, the one is in finance, um, the other one is in marketing, and the other one is in management. And I mean, we have the classical core business courses um, uh, micro and macroeconomics and so on and so forth, principles of finance, um, industrial psychology can also be uh, taken, for example. And then we have also a lot of math courses, um, finite math, we have statistics, um, and we also have some, let's say, a little bit easier math courses, developmental math, if you have some prob uh, problems with math, you can start with this one and then continue with the more advanced ones, or you can also immediately join the uh, normal math courses. So a variety. Thank you very much. We have here a question and I would like uh, if uh, Michael can answer uh, regarding our fabulous Corona times. Uh, if uh, next semester is going to be online or on campus and what measurements do we do to our College Berlin take? in order to make the students feel safe? Thank you, Tal, for the question. So yeah, that's a question I'm asked quite frequently in this time. So uh, basically, we have to obey the German or Berlin government's regulation. And the status quo on that is for the moment that all our freshman courses, by the regulations of the German Berlin government right now, uh, can be held on campus but we are equipped for that with hybrid facilities so for students who will feel unsafe or insecure to come to campus they will join uh, us through hybrid classes uh, in, in terms of a, a zoom equipped class and those who are okay in coming to classes because obviously my personal opinion is that uh, nothing beats in-person classes they will have the introduction uh, courses on campus for students who are a little bit more advanced, uh, Berlin government's uh, decision up until uh, mid-February, I think, is that courses will be solely online. And for what we do on campus, 
we have everything equipped here. So we have the equipment, uh, masks to, to uh, disinfection for hands, uh, several facilities where you can measure your temperature. All our classrooms are now having the social distance of one and a half meter at least, so separate desks. All that is put into a hygiene concept, so don't worry, we are prepared for on-campus classes during Corona time, if that is allowed. And last word on that, I hope if you follow the news, we'll have a vaccine sometimes uh, very soon in January, so then hopefully we will get back to the real normal. Thank you. Thank you. And now we have a few short questions for Scott and then another one regarding German that I would like to answer myself. Um, so, Scott, when will the application for spring semester be opened on Uniassist system? Um, on Uniassist, um, that is already open. It's been open for a couple of weeks now. Um, just to clarify, um, so if you are applying to our German degree program and you haven't completed your education in Germany, you don't have the Abitur, you don't have a Fach Abitur, um, you have an extra step where you go through Uniassist and they will just confirm that you are eligible to enter a German accredited degree. Um, they have an online portal where you just submit your application documents, so they're fairly, fairly simply. Um, but yeah, it should already be open. Okay, um, you mentioned TOEFL, but uh, someone asked here about ILTS. Um, if there is a difference when, when you can give because uh, the person wants to apply first, and then how much time does he have to uh, give the score? That he sure. Yeah, so I mean, like I said earlier, you can apply um, with your results still pending or maybe even before you've done your, um, your exam. Um, but we will need those results before the first day of classes. So spring will begin um, on the 22nd of February, I believe. So you'll have to provide us that document by then. So we know that you are equipped enough to start our classes. Okay. Uh, and last one for you is uh, bank guarantee of solvency is a mandatory document. It is, all, all, our, all our application documents uh, are mandatory. Um, I mean, so that document itself um, is essentially a form that you can download from our website or just email me and I can send you the PDF. Um, the idea is that you just take it to your bank or whoever will be paying your tuition and the bank just signs and stamps it. Um, they can produce their own document if they wish. Not all banks want to sign this specific document. Um, it just kind of needs to clarify the same information that your accounts uh, are not frozen, they're not bankrupt, but you have a functioning bank account. Um, so yeah, I mean, we can be flexible with the timing. Again on that, you can supply that later. Sometimes the banks take a while to, to approve it, um, but yeah, we will need it eventually. Um, thank you very much. I'll take the one um, less question um, that if it's possible for a student who comes from the US, someone here asked, someone who comes from the US and wants to learn German, is it possible um, to actually learn German here? Um, maybe Professor Crawford actually would like to answer that. Um, yeah, certainly. I know that we we have taught classes, uh, German classes, when there was enough student demand. Um, we haven't done that in quite a while, but sometimes when students are really interested, they organize and they let us know. And then if there's enough interest, then we can offer one. Um, but there are also many other options for taking formal classes. There are Volkshochschule, there, there are these kind of community colleges that are local, the, the, where the course is almost free. It's not free, but the, the fee is like, 20 bucks, it's not a lot. Um, and then you also see that the, the other major universities also have regular classes for this. So many of our students do it that way. Um, but also uh, a lot of our students help each other. A lot of them will do tandem hours where they'll say, okay, look, let's have lunch. Half an hour of the lunch will be in English and the other half will be in German. And so you find that there's a real resource for everybody teaching everybody. I think it's, it's my German level is now at the C1 level, which is a pretty good level, I guess. Um, and so, and I just learned it here, you know? So I think it's, it's very easy to learn it here for people who are motivated. Thank you very much. 
Just one last question that just came in, and Scott, if you can mention again when the deadline, uh, deadlines for the American and German programs. For, for spring, sure. So um, like I said earlier, classes begin on the 22nd of February. Um, we have a pretty late deadline, actually, um, 31st of January. Um, you can apply right up until then. We're, you know, like I said, we're small and flexible, so we can turn these around fairly quickly if we need, it, if we need to. Um, though if you need a visa or, or something like that to secure something beforehand, it's always advisable to apply as soon as possible. Um, like I said, it's better this month to get a discount. Otherwise, sooner the better, so you can also come to Berlin earlier and you know, organize yourself, get oriented around the city, maybe enroll in a, in a condensed language course before starting, things like that. So the sooner the better, but you have up until the 31st of January. I mean, if you're already here, then you, you have up until then. Thank you very much, Michael. So thank you very much also for the Q&A sections. I don't see any more questions. Now would be last chance to ask another question. And um, let's wait for a sec. Okay. So uh, thanks a lot for your t uh, attentions from times of uh, the participants. And thanks a lot for all our participants from the tour side that you made it, that you took your time, you shared your stories, you shared your views. Also in Corona times where it's not easy to, to gather all together. I, my personal wish is that I all see you soon on campus and we can drink a cup of coffee and also with our prospective students, that would be super nice. But until then, stay healthy, take care, and yeah, see you very, very soon on campus.